Alright, we're gonna play Shadowgate, a game that probably literally nobody cares about. This is um, a text-based RPG that originated from that whole Macintosh era, where uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Oregon Trail, it was around that time. But uh, basically this game, as you can see, you have one section that shows uh, where you are, or like which room, a little visual representation there. Uh, to the right is your list of items, dumb stuff like that. Uh, on the bottom, you know, I have commands, a little mini-map on the bottom left, and um, Alright, well I'm gonna go ahead and open this book, because if you do anything else to it, uh, the floor in the middle there will actually collapse, and it's one of the first deaths in the game, it's pretty dumb. But, uh, I'm gonna use this key on this door, take the sword and sling, I'm gonna need that for later. I'm not really going to bother with taking too many torches, because it's really kind of a waste of time. And... Here, uh, you will see a shark, uh, a little skeleton. Almost made me stop playing this game, because that's just too spooky. I'm going to take uh, one rock. I'm going to use the stone on the sling, and that will actually put the stone in the sling. I only need one, so I'm not going to bother picking up the rest of them, and uh, this right here is the only time you use the hit command. All the time. And I'm not going to take the bag, because that's a waste of time. Uh, I'm just going to open it, and I'm going to take the gems in order that I'm going to use them. Uh, white, blue, and red. America. And get out of here, and go to that room. Uh, that little socket right there is where the white, uh, white gem goes. You can take those torches if you want. I'm not going to. Uh, in this room, you'll want to always take the shield first, or that little animation will actually kill you. And you'll see a little spooky Grim Reaper. It's too spooky. Take this sphere. The sphere is uh, basically a source of cold. Removes heat if you're a physicist. So we're gonna freeze this lake with the sphere. I'm gonna use a torch on the lake to temporarily melt it and make the sphere come back up to the surface so that I can just grab it again. We're going to take the key from the spooky skeleton. That's the third key. Alright, now we're going to... You only need to open uh, one coffin here for this mummy. And you're going to use a torch to burn it and take a scepter that it's hiding. Uh, the other doors except for the top right, are openable, but they're all useless, and one will actually uh, kill you if you try to go, you know, whatever. It's, a uh, the one in the middle uh, actually opens to a little bag filled with uh, little copper coins, and they're all useless, like, there's not even a really point in getting them unless you just have to grab every item in the game. This is why a torch was all by itself instead of grouped up with the other torches. It was 
was different, so it was lonely. Now, uh, we're gonna use the cloak on self, which is, a, a fancy way of saying equipping the cloak. If you read that sign twice, it'll teach you, um, your first magic that you'll only use once in the game, and it's right here in this room, I'll do that later. Uh, this is where you use the blue gem, you just set it on that pedestal in the middle of the room. Uh, spooky wizard comes out, and he's all like, hey man, here's a scroll. You open it, and you get another piece of magic, Humana. Uh, this will make you invisible to a troll, uh, later on in the game. Um, the broom, you might or might not need it later on in the game. It really kind of depends. There's this one section where, uh, this sphinx will try to get you to answer a riddle, and, uh, the broom is one of the possible answers, so I would suggest, uh, taking it, just in case. use the sphere here, and we'll never be able to use it again, but it's uh, the only way of removing some monster that comes out of that door when you open it. I just preemptively do that so I don't have to worry about them coming out. Just uh, spear the troll, they can fall down. Uh, this is the reason for the sling earlier. Uh, use the loaded sling on this guy, and then you stab him with the sword. 37 times in the chest. Yeah, open the bucket. But, uh, if you don't use the sword on that guy, whenever you leave the area and come back, he'll be standing again. And then you have to go get a whole nother rock, and it, it turns into a mess takes up too much time. This is where you use the red gem from earlier in that little socket, but we're going to go ahead and take all these items first. need the glasses to read the book that's sitting right there. Uh, the map is another one of those possible riddle solutions. Uh, the skull is useless. We're going to go ahead and open the scrolls instead of taking them to just automatically learn the magic and move on. This bookshelf, revealing a whole nother room where you use Tarak. I don't actually know how to pronounce that, I'm just kind of assuming. But uh, once you do, you'll then be able to open the globe, uh, not beforehand. Uh, you need the uh, sixth key, but you don't need the bottle. The bottle is useless. It'll actually kill you if you try to drink it. So if you really want to do that, you can go for it. But, uh, the bellows is another possible answer to uh, that riddle that I keep mentioning. So you can take that if you want. You don't have to. We're going to use the glasses on ourself, equip the glasses, so that we can uh, read this book and learn the last bit of magic in the game. Awesome. Indentation in the floor, you want to uh, use the use command on it, and a bottle of holy water will come out of the floor. Uh, you're going to use that later on a um, hellhound, I guess. Um, that gauntlet that we picked up earlier, when we opened that bucket, uh, serves its purpose and this room. Uh, without it, you won't be able to grab the flute, because the apparently the water is acidic or something like that. 
the flute only has one purpose in the game, and uh, you just observe that it opens a hole in the tree for some reason, and there's a ring in it, you take it. You know, burn the rug. And that's a key. That is a key. I was a bit confused on which key goes where, because all three of these doors require a key, but I need to remember that six goes all the way on the left. The four is in the middle, I know that for sure. solution to this riddle. And whenever you try to go up, uh, that's when the Sphinx will try to get you to uh, answer his riddle. And right now he's trying to describe a horseshoe, so we'll just use the horseshoe on the Sphinx and be like, oh man, you got that so right, that's so cool, you can go into this room. This is another one of those weird rooms where you just do stuff that you wouldn't even think about, like opening Take this rod. It's going to be used as a lightning rod later. Uh, this woman, if you do anything, it'll turn into a wolf and it'll kill you. Uh, so this silver arrow is being plugged into this wolf. I'm going to take that blade. I'm going to do that later. Alright, that's uh, no more need for that section of the game. Going to the far left, where key 6 went. Uh, this is where the hellhound appears. Uh, there he is, right there. He's like, hey man, don't take my shit. But we're gonna spray him with holy water, and he's gonna go away. Uh, we need this horn for the last bit of the game. Uh, we also need this little thing for the last bit of the game. Apparently stars uh, kill dragons, wyverns, whatever that is. The music in this game is actually pretty good for what it was back then. Alright, this is where we use that lightning rod. As you can tell with all the uh, lightning going on. spooky hand comes out of the ground and you uh, take the object out of the out of that hand. That is a wand. Alright. Uh, if you try to do anything with that little gold bucket, you'll just die. You'll, uh, a little part of the balcony will actually collapse and you'll fall into a moat where alligators will bite you. They'll get you. Towards the beginning of the game, because uh, we gotta get some item and make use of that one that we just got. I'm actually going the wrong way, completely ignore what I'm doing right now. Bottle 2 on yourself to make yourself uh, light as a feather so that you don't break this bridge and die doing so. We're going to use the wand on this snake. It's going to turn into staff pages. Yeah. That's it. We no longer have to go anywhere in this section of the game. We can just move on for good. Alright. The uh, troll comes back. 
but uh, that heat mana spell will make us invisible, so we can just go straight through him. Uh, that guy's still dead. Not too many things live when a sword is plummeted into their heart. Alright, check out this uh, spooky skeleton acting like a king. So uh, we're going to give him this scepter. Uh, the ring that we got with the flute belongs right here in this thing that we just opened up. And that will make the spooky skeleton levitate. those torches. Uh, those gargoyles right there in this room, uh, they will kill you if you try to go into either of those two rooms, but if you use Illumina, uh, it will blind them. So they will not attack you for trying to go into uh, one of those rooms. But if you re-enter the room, you will have to do it again. This room, this room got me pretty good when I was a kid, because uh, there's that very specific order that you have to mess with those switches. You have to leave the middle one down, not touch the left one at all. But uh, it gives you like a combination, or like I'm not explaining it. You uh, flip three switches, and if you got the combination right, then that little thing opens up, and you get to take the uh, little orb. And you need that to make the staff. But uh, the trick is that you can use those switches twice within a sequence of three. I didn't know that when I was five years old, so it took me a while to do that. Again, to blind those gargoyles so they don't kill us. Uh, we're gonna use this little switch on this well, and it'll open it up. But if we try to go in there right now, we'll die because we'll just plummet. But um, if you use a Bitcoin, we can go down freely. I thought this was pretty cool. You actually use that mallet on the gong to call this fairy guy. You give him a gold coin, and he's like, alright, well, I'll take you where you want to go. And here we are. I'm not going to bother with using another torch, because we're up already at the end of the game. Uh, the talisman always goes on the left. If you use it on any of the other two, uh, that skull's eyes will actually like shoot Superman heat vision at you, and you'll die. But uh, this is that behemoth that everybody has been talking about throughout this whole game. There he is, right there, spooky. And all I gotta do is just use the completed staff on it, and uh, that's the game, right there. Behemoth grabs this little wizard dude. I you can see uh, the graphics behind uh, those little torches on the way to that little altar or whatever. It's pretty funny. It kind of shows like how they did the art for this game. They, they just left that blank instead of coloring it in. But, um... Usual ending. Some random king thanks you for doing what you gotta do. It's like, here, have my daughter as your wife or whatever. And uh, that's the end of the game.